Und Now we're all live. So then um, it was very dramatic. I'm on there now. So um everyone is very welcome to another Wednesday night of the gardening show. So um we're joined again by lovely Rosemary and um Mary, she's going to going to be giving us gardening tips. If you've seen her page on the Insomnia Gardener, it's absolutely gar it's amazing the colour, the flowers. And it's definitely garden envy. So we're just going to be talking hints and tips. And if you want to pop in already, if you want to stick in maybe where you're from, just give us a shout out, give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you're doing in the garden there. And um, just, just say hello because um, it, gives, it shows us that you're listening and ask questions. And I'm going to pass over to Rosie then to answer them all. <laughs> so how are you keeping? Uh, how are you keeping? I'm great, not a bother. Um, delighted with this improvement in the weather. So um, being out almost every day, um, chased in by the rain a little bit sometimes, but we're making a new bed in the garden. So um, we're doing the heavy work now. So that's not the, the most pleasant, you know, taking the sod off. Uh, we, we laid it out and we use a hose to mark out the shape that we want. And then once we have the shape, then we just go into the, the D sod and then we use the sod. Sometimes we turn it upside down to keep it, to turn it back into soil, but that takes about a year. Yeah. But actually yeah. we, we had a place to use it. Um, so we've just put it on a lane that had uh, kind of dipped down a bit. So we're using, we're re reusing the, the green sod, you know, so that's good. It is, no, that, that, that's very important. And it is exactly yeah. take that sod up because we were talking about that during the week there because yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get the weeds and that coming yeah. up. Anyway. And if you turn it upside down, would you say it's it'll take a year for it to break down and you still yeah. have that root going on anyway. So. Well, you also, I don't know about where you garden, but where we garden here, we've probably got a good foot now. It's good county mead soil. So, oh, yeah. good rich soil. But, you know, when you're taking the sod off, there's a, at least two inches and you're kind of hesitating whether you take it off or not because there's a bit a good bit of soil attached. But what we'll do is... Um, We'll amend the soil. Remember, I was asking you the other day. And, yeah. Uh, we will. We we'll kind of dig it over, and we'll just before the planting. Remember, I asked you, could I sprinkle the powder? Yeah. You know, just to kind of add back a little bit of, of kind of nutrient, and then I've also got some lovely leaf mulch, uh, leaf mold up in the in the back of the garden. I'll dig that in as well, and then we'll be able to get to the nice bit of planting then in about a month's time. So. Absolutely, because that that law will get the microorganisms going in the yeah. soil again that you're after disturbing as well. So it's a, it's yeah. a perfect thing to do actually. It's it's really really good because, and it, it's the right time. It's the really right time of year just yeah. to get out there and get stuck in. And yeah. it was just especially when you feel that spring in the air. I think it's just beautiful. Even this morning I was out there and a light warm breeze blowing and it was spring. And next thing I was down, I was packing up stuff. And next thing I heard the rain coming down. It's oh. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm, I I keep getting soaked now if I'm up. At the back of the garden, it's a kind of a woodland corner, so I can nip under the trees. But um, even it's it's bad when the dog is even looking to go in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 That's absolutely. Good. So, so you're out and you're starting. So, what what are we at then in say doing it with your flowers at the moment? Are you pruning? Actually, starting? yeah, it's a really we're just coming into the busiest time, really. I think. Um, I always, you know, the summer really is little to do except deadheading, but now it's just really frantic um one of the first jobs i'm going to do in a, probably about a week or so is i'm going to divide the snowdrops that i have um we were lucky when we moved here in 2003 it was uh, there was a, quite a lot of the old double uh flora plano uh snowdrops the double ones and we divided those and then i brought a lot from my parents garden so people it's one of the most common questions whenever i put up photos of snowdrops people always say oh mine always die or you know i can't get them to grow and I tried it as well years ago. Gosh, in my, my my innocence, I bought a packet of dry bulbs. Now, if you buy them in August, perhaps when they when they're quite, you know, fresh, like feel the packet. And if they're if they if they feel firm, then they might do. And perhaps soak them in a bit of lukewarm water before you plant them. But otherwise, the best way 
to plant snowdrops that will thrive in your garden is to get some, beg some or borrow some from a, <laughs> steal some from a friend and plant them in your garden or just buy them online. And um, you can buy them in lots of the spe uh, snowdrop specialist places. And, you know, just get, you can just get the common types mm -hmm. or you can get the fancy posh ones, as I call them. And just, you know, and you can literally plant them in ones and they'll generally, once they settle in, they'll double up every year. And so yeah. we only planted those large clumps that I have up in the woodland three or four years ago, and they've already bulked up. So we'll, that's what I will be doing next week. Yeah. And then because snowdrops are beautiful. I, I just love them coming up this yeah. time of year because it's just that little thing of life, isn't it? You know, and oh, they're peeking yeah. up with the snow and they're just wonderful. Yeah. And then you see the crocuses and uh, yeah. we, we grew up where I grew up in my home place was next right side right beside um these old people used to own it back years ago, but they used to have fields of daffodils and did orchards and yeah. used to on their roof you see the crocuses coming up and the snowdrops and the daffodils and I yeah. spend my summers then selling the daffodils or I sell the daffodils then in bunches and then we sell yeah. the apples then in the in the autumn time. But it was absolutely amazing and that's why I suppose the love it. But I was always weary of and that's something you were saying there about taking yeah. um yeah. Some from your parents, like, and I often talk, God, I go to Ryan's and take some of the bulbs, but I was always yeah. afraid of bringing the weed from Ryan's because it has an awful yeah. weed out there. And but I was afraid of bringing the weed with me. Oh, yeah. Well, if you dig them up, I mean, I, when my parents uh, died, I wasn't leaving all the snowdrops because I, I put up a little video actually just today. Um, I, I walk, I walk through the woodland because when they died, we literally dug up huge clumps and they were, we used to call them, they looked like a block of flats because all the snowdrops over the years hadn't been divided. And they were all, they'd all divided and multiplied, but they're all sitting on top of each other. So you just literally be brave. That's what I say. Be brave. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people are kind of delicate with these things, but they're tough as old boots. Yes, I mean, absolutely. they survive everything that the weather throws at them. So just, you can actually, if you feel, if you're worried about a weed, just pull them apart and hose them down. And then right. you'll see, yeah. you'll see that there's like the, the fat bulb. And then there's a white bit. That's the bit that was under the ground. And when you're replanting them, make sure you plant them to the same level that they were already in the ground. And that's a kind of a good rule of thumb. You'll see. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like it's literally it's it's you know the white bulb, and then there's a yellow bit, and then there's the lovely green bit with the the flower on the top. Yeah. If you just give them a bit of water and uh, like water them in, and and don't be don't be upset if they like I've done it and they just flop. You know, but leave the greenery flop, leave the greenery die off. It'll die off really very, very quickly. And then this, you'll have no problem. Your snowdrops will establish uh, really, really well that way. And then someone who planted daffodil bulbs, I don't know who they are, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's foliage coming up, but there's no heads coming on them. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Now, that happened with my father's. I, you know, I mean, sometimes you can it's hard to get the kind of the balance right you can plant them either too deep or too shallow and right. uh, then you'll only just get get foliage but if you generally they say like if you like the bigger the bulb the deeper you plant it like so that's why like the snowdrops don't go down through too deep but about twice the size of the bulb you know if you go down that much you right. know, yeah and yeah, then yeah. you should have, have no problem now they can they could try and dig them up and replant them but i did that in my my father's garden and have to say it didn't work but um you know you could you could feed them and see um if it's in a flower bed you might be able to take off some of the soil and just see how far down they are they are but that is a right. common it's called, it's called um a, you know a blind blind bulb that for some reason they call it that you know and sometimes yeah. it's just age as well with them um, certain bulbs now not with not with snowdrops but certainly with daffodils they're a little bit more awkward yeah yeah and then some i was reading there somewhere lately that you can you just tip off so even when they're finished flowering you'd actually take off the heads of them and oh, yeah. the seeds yeah, yeah just take out don't I, mean, the foliage. I just i just nip them off but but i don't tie them in knots or you know the way you, people you see people tying yeah. them and in fact that's another one of my favorite little um <laughs> well one of my little top little top tips i would say uh, is i don't buy the big i know that the, the big the big daffodils are beautiful but I haven't, the, personally, I haven't the patience to be looking at, you know, a foot and a half of foliage right into yeah. the middle of June and then yeah. telling Porig not to cut the grass because he can't cut the yeah. foliage. Yeah. So I plant um, the miniature tulip or the miniature daffodils. Yeah. Tate Tate is a lovely one. There's a gorgeous little one called Minnow, which is Minnow, really yeah. delicate. And um, then there's another lovely one called Jetfire, which has a kind of an orange center. And that's really lovely. And then there's some... In fact, I planted some lovely yellow double ones and they're quite scented. 
I think it's called cheerfulness. And then one of my favorite daffodils is, it's kind of an in-between. It's not too tall and it's not, it's not as miniature as Tate at Tate, but it's called Bridal Crown. And the scent, if you literally uh, cut three of those and brought them into your kitchen, the smell is divine. Well, but yeah. all around, if you want just that yellow, that sea of yellow, Tate at Tate, like they're, they're only, like they only grow to probably about eight or nine inches. And then you're not looking at the foliage for months. And if you plant them, say, beside something like a hosta, or a perennial, then the, the leaves of the hosta will kind of hide the leaves of the, the dying leaves of the daffodil because you really do need to leave them because I've cut them sometimes and then that's one of the reasons as well that they don't come back the next year, you know, because they need yes. to, die, to die down to feed the bulb for next year. Of course, of course, yeah, and I think that that's what happened. I, I'm the 100th, we I've them along my curb and that's what happened yeah. and I'm trying to avoid them with me right on lawnmower and then... Yeah. There you go. Probably on the phone or something. Yeah. <laughs> but also, then, but I also them. think then it looks terrible because if you have to wait, yeah. then you've got yeah. this long strip of grass and then the grass gets longer yeah. while you're waiting for it to die down. And then when you do cut it, the grass goes all yellow, you know, underneath the bit that you've cut. So it takes a while to catch up. So I will just, the tater tater, as I said, it's, it's just, it's just um, for me personally, I find it a great little daffodil, you know. Yeah, perfect. And then we're talking about a lot of people that message in again. Me, you know, I'd be get messages here during the week. You know, about pruning yeah. back roses, feeding oh, them yeah. now. You know, coming in. Yeah. And you, you were telling me during the week about you know two different types of um, is it um, what was them black blueberry plants or no? Was it um the ones oh, with uh, the dead black currants and red currants? Yeah, yes, that's yes, the black currants and red yeah, currants. That's, that's another kind of one of those things. In fact, it's one of those ones that I nearly have to look up every year and. A great little tip, you know, the way um, I think last week it was Paul that was saying, you know, you don't have to follow what they say in the books. But um, one of my favorite uh, presenters, and I bought a couple of her cookery books, is, you know, Sarah Raven from um, The Gardener's World. And oh, what yes. She, what she does is when she's about to make her jam, it kind of does two jobs. It prunes the black uh, currants and it's much easier than bending over and trying to, you know, pick all the berries off. And what she does is she kind of, now she doesn't take them all out, but she thinks she kind of prunes a few of them. She just cuts the branches, you know, and she cuts yeah. them off. And yeah, and so then they uh, grow up because the black currants, this is the way to remember, normally you prune them in late autumn because the black currants will fruit, they will bear their best fruit on um, new wood. So okay. if you cut, so if you're cutting the branch while they're, while they're ripe, that's almost autumn. And then the new wood will grow up and then that'll have your fruit this year. Whereas the red currants, that's the opposite. So the red currants, um, they actually fruit on oh, best on the old wood. And you, if you just cut it back down to about two buds and then but keep the old wood and then say every four years, the way I do it is it's a bit like um, with a hydrangea. If you want to rejuvenate it, I take out, say, a third of the old stems completely down to the base. And you can, they say to aim for a kind of a cup shape. But I just try and, you know, leave the center open and take out a third. And then you'll have new ones growing up. And then the second year, take out another third and then you'll have new ones. And so within three years, you'll have a completely new bush, you know. Wow. So that's yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of just, you know, so black currants in the autumn and then the red currants, um, you know, any time from now, but just down to about two buds because they'll fruit. If you cut them all the way down, they you'll, you'll lose this year's fruit. Very good, very good. And the same, roses again, would you be, you'd have them pruned yeah. by now, would you? Or you're well, actually, roses, I've actually my, done mine um, already. Right. Um, now, some people don't do them until March, but mine were showing such signs of, of life uh, there about three or four weeks ago. I did them all. And again, um, some of them, I've got a lot of those uh, beautiful flower carpet roses. Now, they're great for impact and they just, oh my goodness, they just keep blooming until Christmas. So, but they're so vigorous. We actually cut them with the with the hedge trimmers, which is very disrespectful. But uh, the posher roses, I gave them the proper treatment with the secretaries. Yeah. And, you know, just cut above a bud. And and literally, there's, I, so many people have say, said this, but um, I think even heard last week, I think, uh, I don't know whether it was Paul or Jeremy said it, but, you know, you let your, your worst enemy prune your roses. Yeah. And, I think it's great because, you know, I have done a hatchet job on some of my roses over the years and they still forgive you. They're very forgiving. They're not as fussy as people think. No, no. Yeah. And then, yeah. then and then hydrangeas are another another one of those things that people ask about all the time. 
yeah. though there's there's like there's a couple of different types but the two main types in gardens um are either the old-fashioned mop heads and those mop heads are um they're the ones that um you know what they, they we used to call them granny's hydrangeas you know the big roundy ball heads yes and with those, you literally just now I wouldn't do them for another kind of couple of weeks. I'll do them at the end of March because we might still have a lot of frost. And uh, I just nip literally right under the under the kind of the, the mop head because those two little leaves underneath, they'll contain, um, you know, a good set of buds. They'll contain this year's flowers. So if you cut that right down at the base, you won't have any flowers. OK. But if you know the do you know the other type ollie they're the panicle hydrangeas they're like they're just more like they're like a cone shape like the, right, most, yeah, yeah. the most famous one is limelight and there's limelight and there's whims red and there's a wonderfully named uh, pinky winky and a couple of different ones like that but they're the opposite you actually they bloom on new wood so you cut those right back down and literally they look like sticks until about june but if you cut them, give them a good framework because they've got to hold up those really, really heavy heads. So if you cut them back to about 18 inches right. and um, just allow those, like allow maybe say five or six really good sturdy stems to build up over the year, the years. And then every year just, you know, when you have your, your kind of stems like that, you'll have the little smaller stems that, you know, they'll grow right up and they're the ones that will carry the, the, the flowers, but cut them back right back down to 18 yeah. well, it's very it's very important uh, the pruning it is yeah. because it usually brings on that bigger anyways and then you see the growth yeah oh and of course give them a good feed they love a bit of manure if you have it yeah, yeah. Seaweed. Yeah. <laughs> seaweed absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. because they do yeah. because they need especially this time of year things are, are yeah. craving a bit of um yeah. a bit of a boost and, and something because especially with the rain and i was just saying it last night it's like you know, especially with your red bed, your garden, you have a lot of leaching going on, you have a lot of heavy rain, like, and all it's doing is washing the nutrients out of the yeah. soil and driving it down and it's missing yeah. the roots. And that's why it is important just to get back on them. Um, yeah. yeah. Pamela's actually saying, when do you start feeding, um, when do you start feeding roses? Um, Literally as soon as they, they, they bud up, you know, as, as yeah. soon as they have the buds, you can start feeding them. Yeah, I think again, Paul was saying last week a good feed of the, the seaweed is a very good, um, yeah, fantastic granular around the base of it and let it slowly go down into it all, over yeah. the year as well. And then I know that, well, I'm going to do it again this year, but I'm really going to go for it this year. Um, I know I'm repeating myself, so apologies to anybody, but last year when I made that little video for you, I by accident I kept spraying the roses with the foliar feed, and it's yeah. the first time. And those, the roses I particularly picked, they were a kind of an orange carpet rose and they were very, they were kind of, the leaves were really awful. They were full of black spot. And lo and behold, I had the greenest leaves. I couldn't believe, loads of people commented when I put up pictures, yeah. how come you don't have black, black spot? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> this must be the seaweed. So it, yeah. It's in, increasing the photosynthesis in, in, yeah. in the plant as well. And that, that's why it, and it helps the plant absorb nutrients from the environment better yeah. than it would. And that, that's the beauty. That, that's what yeah. seaweed, the biostimulant, that's why it's a biostimulant, not really a fertilizer as well. So, Well, that's what we call in this garden a happy accident. So there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. we're going to share a few of your pictures of your garden to get a bit of um, yeah. color in the thing. Now, please bear yeah. with me. This is new. Um, new technology. New technology. Oh, yeah, add to stream. Hold on, I have it set up here. Don't I? Oh, yeah. There you go. Um, I'm actually... Yeah. Let's see where we're at here. It is your... Snowdrops. Snowdrops, yeah. So you're transplanting yeah. where you were saying that's your yeah, two bowl. Yeah, and that's interesting. You can just see there, I put it beside my glove just to show you, you know, kind of the size of it. Yeah. And you can see there's a big, thick, nice, thick, fat bulb with the lovely roots. And then the white bit is the bit that was under the ground. And then the greenery, obviously, that's the, the greenery and the leaves, and that carries the uh, the flowers. So just when you're when you're replanting them, just make sure that you plant them up to where the green starts, and then water them in well, and you should have no problem. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Actually, when you see that, isn't it? Actually, yeah. with the, the white, and then it, it starts to green. That show you how much of the actual foliage is just starts out. So it must be yeah. nearly two, two, two and a half inches there, is there? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and sometimes, and they're all there's so many different varieties. You know, I dug up some the other day and oh my goodness, they were they were really they were probably about eight inches long and half of that must have been under the under the soil because you see do you see there in the woodland sometimes what I do is um we get this uh kind of a black mulch, we get it in the recycling center and it's just like a compost really. 
and it's great for keeping the weeds down. And what we would do yeah. is we'd put um, a sheet of newspaper where there's bulbs anyway. We'd put one sheet of newspaper and then we put the, this, this kind of black compost on top. And it's great, it really tidies up the beds and it also feeds it. The newspapers break down as well and then the bulbs can come up through it. And, um, you know, that's a kind of a, a great thing there. You know, um, that's what we've done up there in the woodland and, and in a couple of other places. You know, it's, it's a great thing to do in the autumn yeah. or indeed in the spring, you know. Yeah, it, it looks really beautiful there. And you really appreciate when it's um, so let's clip on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we are. So there are more tulips. Yeah, we're looking forward to those. In fact, um, I had my first tulips came out the other day, but they really are very early. Um, a tulip streza and it's it's i mean it's only it's been out for the last three or four days um and it almost feels too early but anyway it's a, it, some of the miniature tulips are very early as well um but these are these are later that's orange emperor and then it's just a purple uh a purple lily tulip i can't remember the name and behind you can just see a black one behind that's a great one yeah. so that'll be yeah. oh, they're, they're all up actually at the moment like i saw them the other day yeah and I just mentioned, I was just saying to you before the call there, I went into your Facebook page to grab oh. a few pictures for you. I sent these on to me. Yeah. And I didn't click on your photographs and there's 12,500 pictures. And I thought, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was, she heard of a start here. And thankfully you sent me over a collection. because um, And I did actually, because some of the pictures I had taken from your Facebook page for tonight yeah. were some of them sent anyway. So we were kind of on the same wavelength in some All of right, them. There you go. Yes, yeah, so I just actually, for people watching tonight. Yeah. This is an opera we have going at the minute that it's perfect time, and I suppose, because you're going to be feeding the soil. We've done a special offer. I'll send you on the link for this. So what you're getting is um, fertilizers. You're getting our new MPK pellets, the liquid feed the roads talking about there for feeding your roads, and some of the root boosters. So that's on special offer. It's just for tonight. So if you want to shoot onto the, the website, it's there for tonight only, and it's a gardening show offer. So That root booster actually is great for transplanting. Yeah, I just I mixed it just in a spray bottle. So now when I I actually have a few cuttings, that's what I'm doing as well at the moment. I took cuttings, um, penstemon and actually of a hebe, um, in just in the autumn there in October, and I was dividing them the other day. So when I pull them apart, I sprayed them with that. Is that right? Yeah. That's yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, it's, it's it's actually what it does. It helps the biomass of the root. So basically what that is, it, it's given the root system more energy to produce better. And that, that's the whole, the, the brilliance of it. And that's, yeah, I, I, I we, um, and is that, I, I, and is that the one that you spray? Remember you showed last week, you were spraying it on your seeds when you're planting your seeds. No, right? that was the liquid seaweed. That was the liquid seaweed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, can I, oh yeah, here we are. Just, have to get me homework, know. right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So there's more. <laughs> Yeah, now that's that's uh, Paul Shearer there, isn't that a fabulous tulip? And it's some of the, beautiful. Yeah, that, that black one, and then some of the kind of the more closed ones um, are, I think it's Queen of Night. Um, so that's in the. I'm looking forward to all of those. Actually, it's interesting yeah. because we we did a new bed last year, and I have some pink tulips in it, and I we added a, we did an extension to the bed, and when you plant tulips from new. They're much later than than the ones that are already established, right? You know, so the the, right. the ones that I planted two years ago are already up, I'd say, about three or four inches. Whereas the other one, the new ones that I just planted last autumn, are only starting to to show. Wow. But they'll catch up. They'll catch up eventually, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that we're just taking that bit of time to get established and yeah. Yeah. everything else. But that's the. Yeah. And actually, the arm tulips. Just while we're there, Ollie, just if anybody's interested in tulips, this is another thing I'm asked regularly. Um, with the tulips, a lot of tulips um, are not perennial, so they don't come back. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike daffodils and a lot of the other bulbs, um, tulips are a little bit kind of fussier, but they've just been overbred like so many times, you know, to get all those, like I would call those quite a blousy tulip, you know, those kind of those big fat ones. And... Um, but I have found about nine or 10 tulips to be reliably perennial over the years. And so because it's backbreaking work planting bulbs every autumn, I put these fancy ones in pots and I leave the pots at the door. Or you can put the pots into the bed just for a bit of color. Yes. But the ones that I plant in the ground are um, Queen of Night, 
Queen of Night. Which is that black one, spring green, which is a lovely white with a kind of a green stripe. Uh, very chic. Uh, let me see what else. Ballerina, which is a lovely orange. And then there's two, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Mystic Van, E-I-J-K. I don't know whether it's Ek or Ejik or what. And then there's another one called Salmon Van, E-I-J-K. As I say, I've never heard it pronounced. I, I just I just buy it. And um, and they really are just fantastic at coming back. And Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, and I I plant them and they've they've and oh and of course mi missing the, the most important one apple dorn a it's a p p e l d o o r n that's a Darwin hybrid tulip and it's absolutely fantastic now they're very plain coming like red yellow and orange and I have them planted for about fifteen years under the silver birch and they just they're fantastic still there yeah and I think the beauty a lot of them too you know what I mean they're growing. You know, usually under the birches and you yeah. know, you know the, the places you might not think they'd grow, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're fantastic. So they're 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 a good they're a good go. Yeah. Oh, I love those. I'm waiting for the alliums to come in as well. That's a that's a nice mix of blues and purples and beautiful. Yeah. Alliums are great for that kind of um, you know, when the tulips have gone and there's no more bulbs and you're thinking, oh gosh, now we're, the perennials are only starting. So end of May, beginning of June, um, if you plant loads of alliums. And I again, I find that that one there is just the best. That's purple sensation. And like there's lots of other, there's Globe Master, which is like double or triple the size of that. And then there's a really super duper one called Schubertii, and it's huge. In fact, last year they were so big. They're about that size, big, like wow. a big football. Um, but they're, they're like an explosion. And what I did was I dried them and I sprayed them gold and I put them on the Christmas tree. So they look great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's another, oh, that's beautiful there. We actually have one of them out there ourselves. That's, that's a great plant. That's geranium yeah. roseanne. Yeah. Fantastic plant. Yeah, some of them in the, um, a rockery yeah. up there that is uh, beautiful and it really when it flowers out, flowers, yeah. it just, and it's a good cover in it as well, isn't it? It, it probably, yeah. you know, really spreads out. And would you prune that back at all or do you just leave it be? Or well, probably? it's funny, I, I never prune it. Now, it's funny because yeah. I do prune it in November when it's literally on, on its last legs. And what happens is um, the actual flowers end up creeping off to one side, like kind of, and then the middle of it, more flowers come out of it. Um, but I have it planted along a border mixed in with cat mint because you and I were talking about lavender the other day and I absolutely yeah. love lavender but lavender doesn't love us very much in this country because it's so blooming wet so what I do is I plant a lot of cat, uh, cat mint instead and there's a great one and um, it's called Six Hills Giant and it just gives fabulous color from early on and what happens then is it gets so long and so heavy it kind of flops and then new growth comes up from the center. So I do cut back the cat mint and then it, the new growth comes within about two or three weeks. And that lasts all the way until, until November, along with geranium roseanne. And they're a great combination. Yeah. So. And I think even and just because they be always um, do an extra little course and that. But, but I know in, in the UK at the minute, they're actually doing huge studies going on now with the science of garden, mental health, the yeah. mood like like it's when you look at that blue nearly your mood nearly lifts straight away yeah. when you look at flowers and the color and i think that's so important now more than ever that um and, and, you know yeah and i'm i'm a really it's one of my kind of uh kind of not my high horses i suppose that i love to have color all year round now you, you're not going to have the color that you know in january that you have obviously in the middle of the summer but you can still have you can still do a lot of planting i think i mentioned this the last time and you saw there with the snowdrops there was a little pink. yeah that little pink plant that's another question i get asked numerous times people say oh well my cyclamen didn't last and i planted them and they died and the frost killed them the ones you get in you know the supermarket or you know even even in the garden centers you know you can, they're kind of like a bedding uh, cyclamen and they are not hardy but there are two other types of wonderful cyclamen and they will last for years in your garden. In fact, they'll clump up, they're, they're a little corn, and sometimes uh, I've dug them up and they're like nearly the size of a dinner plate. But wow. there's one it's called, that pink one, the winter one, the Christmas one is called Cyclamen Coom, C-O-U-M. And then there's an autumn one called Cyclamen Heterifolium, H-E-D-E-R-I-F-O-L-I-U-M, I think, Heterifolium. Mm -hmm. And they both have, 
gorgeous leaves, like, you know, beautiful kind of marbling on the leaves. And then those gorgeous cyclamen flowers. And but just don't plant them together. Don't think that you'll get like the autumn and then the the, the, okay. the, heter the heterofolium is much kind of more. It's much a little bit more thuggish than the the, the coom. So just plant them in, in separate parts of the garden, and then you'll have you know two kind of seasons of colour. Yeah. 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 If you see me looking that way, I'm actually I have another screen going here with my yeah, um, I'm very technical. We have two screens, and that's how I can get yeah, the photos to good now. I'm glad you're doing that bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another one of my favorites. That's um, yeah, this is now for a late color. This is uh, Rudbeckia Goldstrom, and there's tons of different Rudbeckias. Um, but this one is just nice in that again, it's not too tall. I, I, my garden is very windy, so um, although I have a few tall uh, Heleniums and Rudbeckias, inevitably we get an awful wind and then they end up flopping because I don't get to stake them, you know, ahead of time. So this one is nice and it, it spreads a little bit, but not, not too much. And it lasts for months. It starts, I suppose, around the end of July. And literally it'll go, even then in, when the first frosts come and the yellow petals fall off, uh, fall off, you're left with this gorgeous brown seed head, which the, the birds enjoy over the, over the, the winter time, you know? A great, great, great pot. Excellent stuff. Oh, and I'm just trying to find my clicker here again. All right. Oops. Try the technology. Not at all. Actually, that plant on the right there. Do you see the little pink a... fluffy fluffy head? That's another great plant. Um, the little pink fluffy head there. That's uh, Persicaria distorta superba, which is a bit of a mouthful. And um, I read a wonderful description once on a garden, you know, an online uh, garden uh, centre. And they went on to describe what a disgusting plant it was and how it was very common and how it was seen at every plant swap and, you know, all this. And I was kind of going, my God, are they trying to sell this or what? And then it said, so in other words, you should never be without this plant in your garden. And so it's a, you know, it's a gorgeous little plant. It starts to bloom around. You saw it there earlier, actually, with the alliums. And then if you cut right. it back, you sometimes you get a second go in the in the autumn, you know. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And I think Katrina there, can you see them matches coming up there to deadhead the geraniums, is it? Uh, I can't see it, but um, um, do I deadhead the geranium? Not geranium roseanne, no. Geranium roseanne just keeps on flowering and flowering and flowering and flowering. It's just fantastic. And then there's another one, it's, I think it's called Patricia and Anne Folkart. They're both, they're now a, kind of a deep cerise pink, but really for bang for buck, I just cannot recommend roseanne. I sure I think it won plant of the centenary or something um at the chelsea flower show and uh it's just one of those oh there's the there it is there when do you plant the oh tree? yeah yeah that's uh, another one there now. uh is it too late to plants uh, looking for something bright and beautiful around our new decking well so it is too late unless you buy tulips that are already in pots like say in a garden center but that's a very expensive way of buying them so you could plant your tulips in the autumn and i would wait until november and um, that's a really good time to plant them in November. But for the summer around your decking, if it's in full sun, you could try Agapanthus. Like that's a wonderful plant, and they do really, really, really well in pots. And um, it's kind of, uh, I think this has been um, debunked, but it's one of, one of those myths. But I must say, I do think it's true that they say that they like to have their roots constricted. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but all I know is that I have a whole load of them out the front and you get these amazing blue or white spires, depending on which one you, you choose. And I just, I start to feed them from around March and the, they are fantastic and the blooms last for ages. So they'd be nice around your decking. Yeah, and that's yeah. another one there actually. Um, someone there, can you plant to screen a python? And I would, I just jump in there. I'd be just... Yeah. Where are you putting up something too tall or something that's going to definitely, you know, I, I a wide open area down there. And I was telling someone during the week, like I wouldn't, I'd be wary of what you plant in because yeah. you don't want to attract and something that's going to attract pests and disease into your tunnel. So yeah, but also, yeah, you don't that. want planting anything that, you know, like bamboo would travel. Well, not all bamboos, but just be very careful. Yeah. But you could plant an evergreen hedge. One of the nicest evergreen hedges, and I wish I had known this, 18 years ago when we moved here and um, we wanted instant hedge so we planted laurel and there's nothing wrong with it it's just that it grows like 
oh my goodness, it, we have to put, prune it twice a year and we really have yeah. to keep on top of it. And it is great, it does a great um, job. But if you buy Portuguese laurel, it's not half as, oh. uh, as vigorous, but it still, it grows and it's got a lovely red stem and it's, it's a lovely evergreen hedge and that could do a, jo a good job. And there's loads of hedging that you could plant, you know, yeah. ar around, you know, you could even plant some of those, um, you know, the Tuya emeralds, you know, they're kind of like an evergreen or Photinias or, you know, any of those evergreen um, kind of hedging plants would, would do, you know, but a row of the Tuya emeralds might be nice. You know, those kind of, they, they're like the, the poor man's um, kind of Italian cypress, you know, those Italian cypress. Um, yeah. but it, they, they're, they're, they're not great in Ireland, you know? Yeah. yeah. We, they're, that's <laughs> what we're called Italian. I think the clue is in the name. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. But no, definitely, because it is it's something I, as I was talking to during the week about is getting that about some hedging to do myself. And I'm just waiting, I don't want to rush in and getting something. But I, I might look at that Portuguese laurel actually. I have a lot, lots of laurel hedge around the house. As now, you say, it, it'll get very yeah. wide and thick. Oh, yeah. Well, now, you see, there's so many different types of hedging. Like we've learned because we've got a couple of different types here. We planted beech out the front and around the gate, it kept dying. And we were like, what is going on? And our neighbor actually told us that um, there's a kind of a seam of soil that just didn't suit it because he had a hedge on the far side. So yeah. we also realized it was very wet and hedge, uh, beach hedging is quite, it just doesn't like wet feet. So no. we planted um, hornbeam and it's almost the same. It just doesn't look as pretty in the, in the autumn with the autumn colors, but hornbeam is a fantastic hedge for kind of damp sites. And then if you want, right. if you have a very windy site, which we have, like our, our garden is very, very windy. So we just planted, um, it's, a, it's a great coastal hedging. It's Olaria, I think it's called Traversii. I don't know how to pronounce it, but Olaria. And it's kind of got a silvery leaf. Now it's not as, okay. as, as um, kind of glamorous looking as a beach hedge, but it's, it's fantastic. And actually beach is, is good as well. You know, beach will, like the whole, the whole point is as well, when you're trying to block wind, you know, you're not trying to, um, like a wall, will just kind of create a, a venturi, it'll go over mm -hmm. it or around it. Whereas if you have a hedge, the wind will kind of go through it and just slow down. So the old area is good if, if you want it if for a windy site. Yeah, and again, I'd be keeping it a good distance away from your polytunnel as well, because you don't yeah. be blocking too much light, light in your yeah. polytunnel. You wouldn't have it around it. You know, you definitely want it a couple of meters away from your polytunnel and not yeah. you know, something that's not going to be too high anyways, because I think if you keep it up around seven or eight or it's even five, six foot, I think you're going to be fine anyway, but yeah. you go up any higher and you don't want anything that's going to block the light coming in anyway. Oh, exactly. yeah. 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 So even like in then, so now we're moving into, I think you have potatoes, uh, seed potatoes um, chilting at the minute and uh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. What, May, what breed do you go with? Or? Um, well, my dad always planted British Queens and I did, I planted them last year actually, but I plant I, you know, there's only three of us, so there's only so many potatoes we can eat. So uh, I planted, um, I've got Colleen, uh, which I planted last year for the first time and they were gorgeous. And then we always, try, we have a lot of trees here. So because of the blight, um, you know, potato blight, yeah. uh, we always try and plant our main crop as a blight resistant one. Now, yeah. I mean, it's not fully resistant because I don't want to have to be spraying them or anything like that. So. The Satanta was fantastic and we got wonderful potatoes out of it last year. And then I can't remember the name of it, but I've, I think because I got a present about four or five years ago from um, a friend of mine, her dad gave me purple potatoes and they really are purple when you cut through them and when you cook them, they're purple. So they look fantastic in a potato salad. So I, and they, but they don't grow big. Like they they only grow like really, really small, like the pink fir apple or something like that. But okay. um, there's so many different types out there. Like, you know, the first earlies, second earlies, and then the main. Yeah. Crop. Yeah. I normally put in sharp to express myself in the first yeah. earlies. I, I don't I either put in a first early. I, I never really put in a, a main crop and it's got because I, I was moving. I, I just find somewhere in my garden. Yeah. A crop of potatoes will grow. Yeah. But I never even plant it. Like <laughs> a load of topsoil I got in, and next thing I see these potato plants. I went and dug them out, oh. lovely potatoes out of it. A surprise dig, and then there was another little area was throwing rocks and all topsoil and I potatoes. And in between, like, and that's the thing with potatoes, they literally grow anywhere, and they're, they they're the brilliant compost. for breaking up the soil. And yeah, they grow in the compost bin if you leave would, absolutely, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's something as well, just in case anyone is, is thinking, you know, you buy a, a rooster, or you're buying potatoes in the shop, and you see it. You know the seed coming on 
really it's not a good idea to be planting potatoes that you're buying in the shops, you know, your edible potatoes, because the seed potatoes have gone through a specific process. Yeah. You know, to keep them disease free and that to a certain extent. So, you know what I mean? You always want to be buying a good quality um, seed yeah. potato as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what yeah. the film? Oh, should I sow? Uh, should I sow main crop be planted at the same time? Should er no yeah. early early put in from, yeah. from Paddy's Day onwards, really? Yeah. Well, the earlies, my dad always planted the earlies on Paddy's Day and then the main yeah. crop a couple of weeks later. Yeah, yeah. That they, to give them to give it a the other thing. And then the other thing as well, it you know, if you're starting your garden, I think you know, if, you know, a lot of the seeds you now you're going to be starting them in, inside or yeah. I, I planted um carrots only there with the last Saturday or Saturday before. They're a yeah. they're a winter carrot, they're the win in January, February. And you know, I think if you're planting carrots, get the carrot in early because you're going to beat that if you can beat the the root oh. fly, the carrot fly, yeah. and getting them in earlier because it's only when the real that spring heat and early summer heat comes on that all these the carrot fly comes out and then another tip as well if you, did you right i gave up yeah destroyed yeah it, it, they're, they're really the, the people find them hit and miss like but um yeah. you just when, when you get it when you get them right they're just beautiful and yeah. you know have a bit of red cabbage there alongside them and it's brilliant for a bit of coleslaw yeah it's, yeah that's well, what we use them for but um, definitely, and you know, using a bit of netting around them as well when they start coming up will keep um, the green fly. But the green fly actually, or not the green fly, the, the carrot fly, he doesn't fly, it actually doesn't really fly that high for something. Mm -hmm. So if it, the higher up you go with your, your carrots and um, less chance you'll get them anyways. Yeah, actually that's the one time they grew for me. I put them in a pot and I put the pot on top of the table because I read yeah. that. And I got, yeah. about, I got about five carrots, so it wasn't exactly, <laughs> it was a lot of effort for five yeah. carrots, you know. So it is, it is, it is, yeah, 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 yeah. nothing better right. than you know, yeah. To. yeah. But if you, I think you also have to grow with vegetables if you grow what you like to eat as well. I love peas, you know, and I, I don't even care if I cook them, you know. We, when we yeah. grew up, we used to just, oh my goodness, I don't know how my father put up, put up with us, we used to just eat all the all the peas raw, you know, they never <laughs> got to the pot, and yeah. uh, and then green beans. And in fact, I planted asparagus about, you know, because I thought, God, isn't this wonderful? A vegetable that you can plant that you don't have to plant every year. Yeah. So anyway, I planted asparagus and I planted, I think, uh, six or eight um, asparagus. Um, Asher for crying out loud. You'd want to plant 25 of them to get a dinner because with the six plants, you'd get one spear one one day and then the next day you'd get another spear. Yeah. And they're, yeah. they're nicest when you, when you cook them straight away. So what I started doing was I just eat them raw because they're so tender and I would just break them off. And then I ended up with about 12 plants, but then I gave up because, and I mean, they're still there, but and, and it was, you know what I did? I planted roses around them. And when the asparagus, so that when the asparagus spear comes up, I just break them off. And if I get two or three, then I'll, I'll steam them. But otherwise, yeah. I yeah, I have a bit of them. We get we get a good few, but I like that to do to come up and then the wood. But like you could get a couple of days in a row, and then exactly you get keeping out yeah. there all the time. Why is there no asparagus down there? And I'd have them all eaten down in the garden because yeah. you get to be down there work and next thing you're chewing on the bit of asparagus. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But green and beans, that, I, yeah. yeah, and garlic. Yeah, I, I yeah, garlic. Yeah, I I love growing the beans and peas myself, and I, I love that whole thing of staking them up and the yeah. French runner beans and. And having that climate thing, because even there today we took out peas out of the freezer. Oh yeah, and it was beautiful. We had them blanched. Like I had an abundance of peas and broad beans is another brilliant one as well. And the stuff that can go actually, you can nearly start planting them. Come into March and April into yeah. your pots, yeah. one into pots. I find with peas though, I don't know whether I like to plant the peas directly into the soil rather than putting them into trays and transplanting mm -hmm. them. It just I always find a better success that way. I don't know what way. Did you ever try do. them in? Did you ever try them in the guttering? You know, like an old piece of gutter, like a yeah. plastic gutter. Or we had them knocking around here because it's an old house, so there was a lot of old metal gutters. And I saw it somewhere on one of the garden shows or something. And so you fill the gutter with compost, and you plant them, you know, at the the distance you want them in the bed. And then when you want, when they're, when they've germinated and they're up, you know, a certain amount, you just uh, kind of pull a little groove into the, into the race bed and then you pull them out into the, into the, into the spot uh, and off they go. So I thought that was uh, very good. Yeah, yeah, they're a smart little idea actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, have plenty no, of I tried it one year, 
I tried it one year with, it was a, a bit of rusty old cast iron guttering. And I had this image, they're all going to slide out into the bed. And should they all stuck on the bits of rust and everything? And I was like, yeah. oh God. So the next year I actually had a bit of plastic guttering and that worked perfect. But the, yeah. the cast iron one didn't work. So no, you know, not plastic, it was, yeah. I thought that was, a, that was a good trick now, you know. It was absolutely, yeah, that, and that's the thing, you know. If you, I, mean, I was talking to someone on the phone earlier on, if you're just picking up one little thing along the way that makes makes yeah. the thing a little bit better, and yeah. then I suppose look at again, um, look at there's loads of stuff going on. You can be definitely look at if, if people are out there and they're wondering what to do, definitely looking after the soil and, and fertilizing yeah. the soil now is very important and getting um, oh, yeah. and cutting soil back. Well, I mean, it's about time Go, coming into March now. Um, I start to cut back all the 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 perennials, you know, anything that's still, you know, um, got like, you know, the, 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 the leaves from last year just cut away, you know, so, uh, and to kind of tidy up, like I was tidying up the other day and, um, oh, sure, I must have filled about five wheelbarrows full of stuff, you know, just, you know, like ladies' mantle, all the leaves of, of, of things like that. It's great to get rid of those. Yeah. And I'm going to give you a tip when you're spraying your um, roses with your, and you see, once your potatoes come up, actually, once yeah. you're full of them, feed them the seaweed, and you'll see the difference. Well, oh. well, last year yeah. I put it into the, I put the the, the granular store there, the milled seaweed. I put that into the yeah. plant hole. Is that right? Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I, I always spray them again with the seed. But but oh. if you spray them on the foliage, because we would sell in large quantities, thousands of liters of the liquid seaweed every year for potato farmers. Yeah. And they they have trials done. It increased the yield, and it increased it increased the yield by a massive amount. And your potatoes will be more evenly because a lot of time when you're planting potatoes, when the stress comes on them, and that's why you yeah. get a big potato, a small potato, because the plant is stressed. If you're feeding them and feeding them a good um, feed, it they're okay. going to be more more they to be more um, uniformed. Yeah. Okay. So if you give them give them a shot shot of it, it it's brilliant. Oh, I I'll remember that now. I'll have to yeah, absolutely, that absolutely, yeah. <laughs> And another tip, actually, if you have a polyton land, what I've done a couple of beds in the polyton land outside, I've got a bit of ceram and I've covered them over because I'm going to be planted in there shortly just to heat up the soil a bit more. Oh, yes, yes. I just covered I had a bit of black um, ceram there and a bit of poly, poly, or, um, black polythene. I just put it across a couple of the beds because that, that nice heat now will get, it'll penetrate down into the soil yeah. a bit better as well. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Must it's just, try that it's just, yeah, yeah it, just, it gets a bit more and then obviously the heat then if there's you know if there's certain anything in it it might just kill the bits off as well but it just it's just important and do you plant so garlic? garlic is good as well i mean i i plant i always plant it in november though i the very same my mind are probably maybe eight or nine inches up now well they're well actually probably a bit more but it, it's yet yeah, garlic it's i actually every morning when i get up i chop up a clove, clove of garlic i leave yeah. it sitting there for about five minutes then i put in a spoon and i Drink it down. Excellent. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a brilliant. It, it, I just I, I read about it years ago, no and then gar, I, no garlic capsules for you. No, no, there <laughs> you have to leave it sitting there to get the, the enzyme going in or yeah. wherever else. You yeah. can't just eat it right down, but yeah. um, someone says me. It's a very easy thing to grow, you know. For for um, you know, if you're starting out with with veg, it's very rewarding as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. But if you plant them in November, now you can plant them in spring. But um, I, I just prefer to get them started in November, you know, and they love lots yeah. of autumn. So, uh, you know, just from now on until probably about May, you know, just keep them well watered if they're already in, you know, so so that you can just get the nice fat, uh, fat uh, cloves. And, I always, yeah. and if you, you know, the way again, this what you were saying about don't plant the potatoes from the shop, definitely don't plant the garlic from the shop because a lot of those no. they are from China and it's yeah. not it's not suitable. In fact, if you if you look at um, when you're buying some of the the garlic to plant, if you buy something, I think a lot of the ones from the Isle of Wight, they have a similar climate to ours. So, you know, plant something that's going to be suitable for an Irish climate. You know, absolutely, absolutely, that's for sure. Because you, you don't know where, and that's the thing about a lot of the veg and chops and that, you don't really know where it's coming from. You no. know, and it's. No. You know, exactly. it's, it might be, you know, and even I, I find that as well, you know, that being a bonnet about, you know, organic vegetables and stuff like that. And it's coming in from Holland and it's picked yeah. three days ago and your man is still on the counter for another yeah. three days. And so I, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I think the only two way, regardless whether it's an organic plant or non plant, I think if you grow it as organically yourself, at least you know that it's um, yeah. no going to be good. No air miles on our, on our, on our veg. 
No, not that bit. And the, and the, <laughs> definitely not. And it's a good time. I've just, I actually just planted a, a few cucumber seeds as well the other day. So, um, and I planted, I planted cucumbers, tomatoes, and uh, what else did I plant? Oh, sweet pea. Um, and I planted the it? sweet pea. Um, if just, you know, if you want to try it, um, I did the same last year with poppies. Uh, I planted them in toilet rolls. You know, I just, I stacked up the, the, the middle of the toilet rolls and I uh, filled them with compost. And then you can put the toilet roll directly into the soil. And then it just disintegrates away and they, off they grow. You know, it's just, it's very handy. You don't disturb the roots that way. Absolutely. That, 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 that's really, because I've done that myself, actually. And actually, I used eggshells one time, but I found you were not oh, watching great. them to dry out. Yeah, the eggshells, half them, but they're, they're again, the dry, some of them dried out very quickly on me, but I think the tile rolls would, would hold moisture. You know, you have that extra bit of soil in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I was doing this week. But I think, I, I think I'm going to hold off for another yeah. week or two. I've got a, a mountain of seeds. I don't know what, I don't know why I ordered so many seeds, but I ordered lots of seeds. And if I get to plant them all, it'll be a blooming miracle. But uh, I've also started a, yeah. a wildflower meadow. So I'm looking forward to that this year. So Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, I've, but I'm in strict instructions actually. And, yeah. Go on. No, I was just going to say because, uh, like, the wildflower. Wildflower. Well, it's look. It's not really wildflower. It's not going to be. It's going to be a mix of everything because yeah. there's a kind of a wet patch running down the middle. So I put um, some candelabra primulas in there. So it's going to be a bit of a mishmash. It's going to be. I think. I, I think I, we're going to call it an ornamental meadow as opposed to a wildflower meadow. Well, a bit of everything. But um, just to counteract the grass, uh, if anybody is thinking of doing it, if you can get the seeds of yellow rattle. Um, it's the yellow rattle helps to weaken the grass, and um, it's like it's parasitic on the, the 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 roots of the grass, so it'll just weaken the grass. And then you have to plant it for a kind of couple of seasons, and then it should seed around the place, and it'll just lessen the grass in there. That's that's the theory, anyway. So I'll let me, I'll let you know at the end of the summer how that one went. Yeah, no, so you you would just throw it on top of the, the grass like you don't. Yeah, well, I, I I did a kind of a test patch last year. Uh, just along the bank and what I did was I strimmed um, the bank just with the strimmer so that I exposed all the soil and then I put the the seed onto the kind of the bare earth and it did it, it took oh yes yeah, yeah, yeah and you know and it's it just about you're, but you're, you have to do it a couple of a uh, couple of um, years in a row so I'll be doing that hopefully this week as well you know going to do that again to just put in Brilliant. more of now i have i have a lot of stuff germinating and we planted lots of bluebells and we planted some uh daffodils what else bluebells daffodils i can't remember something else I can't i'll find out soon enough i suppose when they're when they come up yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah the bluebells are absolutely yeah i love that yeah. i think it's like you know it's just um they're a beautiful thing and again they'll spread out quite a bit well as well don't they well, we've hundreds of them, hundreds. Of, they were the one thing. Yeah. Uh, big trees, we had a few snowdrops and lots and lots of bluebells. So, um, and everywhere we, we actually made a white bed here a few years ago. And then every year, no matter how many times I dig them out, there's bluebells in the middle of the white bed. So it's a, for a while, it's a blue and white bed, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's okay. So, yeah. So look at again, Rosie, thank you so much for coming on. We could talk to you all night about gardening, you know it. I think um, you can see the passion you have for it. You can read it off you and you can hear it in your voice. And, uh, you know, your garden, the flowers, that's why I have my, that's why I keep looking over here at my other screen with your flowers here on it. And they're just, your garden, I think, you know, and I, you know, I want to give you a bit of gratitude as well, because looking at what you're doing, and I'm sure like everyone else, like it's, I'm looking at my garden and I'm doing a little bit by little bit. And, you know, I'm adding that extra bit of color and I'm putting a bit more effort into my uh, flower garden as because it's normally taken up with um which of that it's always an what's going on down in the yeah. and a garden is an ongoing thing like it's never it's never static and you know you think in fact a very good friend of my mother's who's really helped me over the years she said a really interesting thing well many many interesting things to me but one of the best things she said to me was if something isn't working in your garden like a garden is as much about what you take out as what you put in so if you're looking at something, you're kind of going, I really yes. don't like the shape of that. Just, you know, I'm sorry, just move it somewhere else or give it to somebody or just take it out because life is too short to be looking at something that you don't like. But so if yeah. it's something that, and if it's something that doesn't suit, you know, if it's something that is constantly burnt by wind or it's just too damp or too, you know, sometimes like the plants will tell you. So that's just, that was another yeah. thing. And then she also said, um, 
everything wants to live. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you, if, you, if you think, oh God, it's the wrong time to move this, but I really have to move it, you know, move it. I mean, because, you know, that's the best time to move something when you have to move it, you know, so. Absolutely. And it's not, again, I think and we uh, people say it all the time, and Paul and yourself touched on it as well, you know, just because yeah. it's in the book, it just means it's, it's gospel, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's you know, you do what you, you do, what you have, you work with what you can at the time. I mean, I mean they say that peony roses don't like to be moved, right? They don't like to be disturbed. And I was, again, my mother, she had a beautiful peony rose and I dug it up and we were being really careful and we dug it up and I was trying to move it with the soil so I wouldn't disturb it. And the whole thing collapsed into six pieces and I nearly burst into tears. I was like, oh, it's going to die. And all six, I got six plants, all six pieces grew. So sometimes you just have yeah. to be brave and just go for it, you know? Absolutely. And it's actually, it does bring me out because I don't recall, I do get these calls during the way. I do a fascinating phone call during the week. But it, I was talking to this lady and she was saying to me, oh God, you know, she's been gardening a while. And she says, there's all these new techniques out there. There's this yeah. and there's that. And what you think of the no dig? And I used to love going out digging my garden. I said, look, at, yeah. if you love going out digging your garden, go out and dig your garden. If that's exactly. your thing, if someone else doesn't want to dig their garden, brilliant. But if you enjoy it, do it. Whatever you know, works. you know, there's, whatever works and i think you have to be happy with it and if you have a system that's working just just keep doing it and yeah. you know keep learning yeah. but you know don't go changing everything because someone else might be doing that or promoting it you know everyone to their own so um, yeah and i mean and that's that's you know what i say that I, i'm always very careful to say look this is what works for me like for example like yeah. i was taking cuttings the other day and perhaps it's not the right time of the year but again i think you, you touched on it last week um, we live in quite a temperate climate, despite us all giving out about the weather. Like if you ever look at the band across the, you know, if you have a, a map of the world that's, you know, flat in front of you, like we're probably, you know, we're on, on the same, you know, level as parts of Russia and parts of, you know, northern Canada. Where we're, like it's minus 20 in a lot of these places. And here we're all because it's, you know, two degrees, you know, so... We have a quite a temperate climate with very few extremes of, you know, certainly don't get extreme heat, but we really don't get extreme cold either. You know, like when, no. it's, when it's minus two, it's a big event here, you know, so. Absolutely. It is, it yeah. is absolutely because uh, thanks to the Gulf Stream, we have that um, exactly. mildness coming up, isn't it? Yeah. So that's, really, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good thing, to other, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Look at I always say there's no thing as bad weather, it's all bad clothing and uh, just get out and get out in the garden and do what you have to do and yeah. um, just enjoy it. I think that's it. And look at we're going, I hope, really hope you all and thanks so much for you know, awesome. people are saying thank you very much, very informative. And again, Rosie, I want to thank you for everything. You're absolutely, you know, you're a wonderful person to have a chat with. And I say, you know, thanks very much for coming on again. Now look at we're going to keep we'll keep doing these every week and we've um well, tune in we'll next announce week. next week's um, guests later on tomorrow, and then we'll keep it going. Because look, at it, it's all about just sharing, and we can share a few bits of tips that's going to help you, awesome. and then what you're putting into the comment section will help us, and sure to give, give, give. Great stuff. Listen, thanks for yeah. being on. All right. No problem. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye -bye. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.